the PS1 style of horror games have always been either amazing or straight up weird, which in this case is just weird. Countdown follows the stories of two postal workers trying to work minimum wage jobs in the 1950s, which were probably not at all minimum wage, because you could probably buy a small house for two cents. I don't know, I failed to get into a good business school. Anyways, the story follows the postal workers named John Rowe and Doe, first name not mentioned, and how they navigate the small town of Little Vale, sending packages and such to its different inhabitants. The first game starts off with John making his way to Little Vale and meeting up with the locals who look eerily happy for some reason and talking gibberish. John soon learns that the inhabitants of this small town are actually cultists who follow a demonic entity from hell which came to possess a nun named Lilith in the 1800s through the use of a small red stone like orbs that look like the male genitalia of her testicular torsion. Anyways, Lilith possesses the pastor of Little Vale before he becomes the pastor of Little Vale and commands him to build the town of Little Vale and forces him to recruit more people to convert them into cultists. Starting the cult was of course part of a bigger plan as Lilith needed a special hunk of a man to procreate with so that their offspring could bring about world domination. This special hunk of a man was Doe. I bet his first name is John. Doe gets a vision from Lilith, now a big titty nun, who says that she has chosen him and suddenly turns his wet dream into a nightmare. Doe is also a postman like Ro and is actually sent to deliver packages to Little Vale 10 days after Ro was sent. Upon arriving there, the residents of Little Vale seem to be smiling eerily again and mention that he better not disappear like the last one did. Now here you may be wondering what happened to John Ro from the first game. Well, the canon ending to that game is that when John escapes town, he somehow gets stuck in limbo forever searching for a way out never to be seen again as confirmed by the developers of the game, which explains why the residents stopped seeing him a few days after his arrival on June 2nd, 1959. Ro then meets with the pastor again who tries to hurt him in some way which prompts Ro to seek shelter in a nearby cave where he finds the monolith of Lilith talking to him like his lover, telling him to go to her mansion, to which he does, where he has to seek shelter from a messed up demonic pastor as he was punished by Lilith for hurting her bay. Ro eventually reaches Lilith by the end of the island, surrounded by dead residents of Little Vale, and they Smash. This is the canon story in my opinion, but there are other aspects of the story that I would like to discuss. In the first game, if the postman does not escape, he gets to find out that he was sent there coincidentally as he was not supposed to enter Little Vale and it was in fact Ro who was supposed to be there as Lynette has chosen him, which is why the pastor says that he was at the right place at the wrong time as during this time Lilith still has not gained her big titty nun form. So to wipe out the postman, the demon riding inside the pasture comes out and kills the postman but this also results in the death of the town residents as somehow the demon showing their true forms required them to drink poison in a ritualistic sub deletion. Probably so that no one knows the identities of the demons as no one would be alive to tell the tales and also because demons do not like their identities to be revealed. I learned that from the Conjuring movies. The end of this shows that a newspaper reveals the cult was in fact residing in Little Vale, but no one knows who it was following, which is probably why I made the assumption that the demon did not want his name to be thrown out. The next thing I would like to discuss is the origins of Lilith. In game, it shows that a nun named Lilith was possessed by a demon after coming in contact with a red stone and then she started eating people, I think. The town folks spawned a mob and declared her a witch and then deleted her from existence but not really because the demon still survived in her and somehow imprisoned an Egyptian deity called Karen the Underkeeper of Kanat, who is basically the equivalent of Hades and also scattered his powers to make him weak and trapped him under hell. 
Of course, this was a genius part of Lilith's plan to raise her future offspring and so that he could rule both the underworld as well as the human world. Releasing Karen results in two endings. In the first one, if you manage to restore Karen's power, he quickly kills her. But if you don't restore his powers, then he dies a pretty funny death. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.